Okay, part two. Uh, the other backer along with Lord Chumley is Sean Berger Jr. Of course, Sean Berger is the one that helps Megatron conquer Earth when the Autobots get put on trial for war crimes. Right. Uh, they then trick some of the people that are building it and Simultech Industries, believing themselves to be building a body for Sunstreaker, end up creating it for the new form for Dead End. The Central Institute of Technology is uh, constructing a new body for Trial Barrier. It gets turned into Swindle. Okay? Now, to counteract the development of the fact that the Decepticons are now becoming alternators in themselves, uh, they, the Autobots launched a new offensive called Project Genotronic Translink. Right? Uh, and it's headed by Chip Chase. And it involves basically putting a load of the, the Autobots power cells into subspace and it allows them to control various things. And I'm not going to bother going into that because it's not really part of the whole thing in itself. Uh, on Cybertron, the war's not going very, very well at all for the Autobots, and the Decepticons manage to infect the Dinobots uh, with something, and that in itself turns the Dinobots a little bit crazy, and the Autobots are actually forced to kill them. Wheeljack, who himself has become uh, an alternator at this point, uh, he's speaking to Grimlock, and Grimlock's very upset about all this, the fact that they turn against the Autobots. So... Wheeljack brings him back in the form of a car itself. Uh, and you think he's, I think he's a Mustang, as I recall. This is Grimlock. Uh, this is Biotech Grimlock. And he's a, yeah, he's a Mustang GT. I'm fairly sure that is what it is. It may, may be wrong. I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Okay. Right. The story doesn't end there, though, because Ravage comes into it again. And Ravage, of course, pops up in Beast Wars. Ravage seems to manage to get himself everywhere. Ravage comes into it, and he gets himself remade into a vinyl tech. And I've got, I've got him as well. And he's very nice. Look at that. He's a... <laughs> Same model as Trax. He's a Corvette. But he's a black Corvette. Convertible with red seats. And it's just like... Humana, humana, humana. But yes, Ravage is, ve Ravage, Ravage is very, very sexy. Anyway, that's the story in itself in a nutshell. I don't want to go far too much into the story uh, because basically I'd just be reiterating whatever it is that's written on Wikipedia. Uh, some of it I've actually got on my screen at the moment while I'm doing this, just to give me, just to give me hints and tips. There we go. Right, now onto the toys. Onto the toys. Uh, stopwatch running, and I've still got, oh, I've still got a good seven minutes, so I'm all right. All right, onto the toys themselves. They are beautiful. Uh, I'll bring back up Sideswipe. I mean, that is gorgeous, and I don't, you probably can't see it, A, because the bad lighting, uh, and B, because my camera focus, but the detailed interior is fantastic. I mean, there's, there's gear stick, there's uh, speed dials, there's a steering wheel, uh, there's a handbrake, the seats have all got details in them. And now the toys. Uh, in the, in the, in the storyline, the toys are built using the Earth manufacturer's designs. Do you think the Citroen advert in real life? First of you who haven't seen the Citroen advert, the Citroen advert technology is what they're using. Uh, it was a test subject for what they're using for the American Transformers movie directed by Michael Bay. We'll see how that one comes out. Uh, but if you, if you haven't seen the Citroen adverts, you really should. Check it elsewhere on YouTube. They're bound to be on here. Now, the storyline with the vinyl tech that the, uh, the Transformers were made using the Autobot car manufacturers on Earth ties in with the toy line. Now, obviously, the storyline was written to go with the toys. Uh, unlike the Transformers cartoon in itself, where the toys came as a part of the of the, of the, of the cartoons, at least in the first series. By the by, the third series, Hasbro was re was was doing the cartoons just as a kind of like a, a twenty minute advert, and it was an it was an infomercial for the new toys. But the toys themselves, the alternators themselves, are one to twenty four scale. In other words, they are built to scale of the cars they represent. So, this is an actual representation of a Dodge Viper SRT-10. 
in the form of Sideswipe. And they are lovely. They are lovely. I will put two things on them. One I mentioned in the first video is they're not cheap. They're not cheap. Uh, I was looking at a, a Jazz who for some reason gets renamed Meister. And he's available in the vinyl tech in red and in the vinyl tech in the old Santa Sorry in white. Uh, same with Prowl. Prowl. Prowl, I think, actually has two designs. Uh, he's got a standard police car mode, which is white, which is the one I want. And then he's got a blue design as well. Um, I can't think offhand what that is. Now, they're not cheap. They're not. They're not cheap. As I said in the other video, they're fifteen to twenty pound a go. And even on eBay, I did a. I was, that's why I was mentioning Jazz. Uh, it was a regular, just a regular auction. Wasn't even buy it now, and it ended at twenty eight pound. And I didn't buy that. I wasn't paying twenty eight quid for him. Uh, as nice as they are, especially when I can actually go to a uh, store in town, Forbidden Planet, and as ludic ludicrously overpriced as Forbidden Planet is, uh, I can still pick Jazz up for thirty quid in there. So I wasn't going to pay twenty eight pound on eBay and then another five six pound personal packaging for it because that's simply not worth it. Uh, so they're not cheap and the other thing I'll say is they're not kids toys you don't want to be buying little Jimmy this for Christmas I'm telling you they are not children's toys uh, it even seems that Hasbro and Takara realised just how much how finicky they could be because some of the parts such as the doors uh, are designed to come out uh, the fists are as well, the leg joints are as well. If you apply too much pressure, they're designed to pop out and then pop back in. Which for some of them is a damn good thing. Because they are very finicky to transform. Well, Silver Streak was a bit of a nightmare for me to transform the first, because he was the first one I got, so I wasn't used to him. And I still can't transform him back into car mode for some reason. I, I can get the front parts fine and the back parts fine, but I can't get him to meet in the middle correctly. I don't know why. I just can't figure out how to put them back, transform back. But some of them, to get them into robot mode, it's, uh, it's horrible. Uh, Wheeljack was very, very tough. Wheel, to transform the head, I'm not, which is why I'm not looking forward to transforming Grimlock, because Grimlock's the same car, just with a different paint job and a different head. Uh, so that's going to be a pain in the ass to transform as well. But I'll persevere, obviously. Uh, but also... They have a tendency to pop out, as I said. I mean, the, sh the, sh the Shock Blast that I've got, who is Shockwave redesigned, uh, his bonnet, I, and I know I'm not the only person that has this problem, because I've, I've spoken to other people online who have the same problem with uh, Shock Blast, is that when you put the head out, because the, 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 gen the generic is the bonnet folds down and the head pops up, and the bonnet pops out, and it doesn't, you get the head out, and the bonnet doesn't sit properly back into place, so it, it, it it's folded up like that, and the picture I saw on the box of Jazz is actually, even the, the box itself, the picture on the box itself, it's got the head, it's got the bonnet not fully shut, so that they are very, very finicky to transform, uh, and they are on my shelf in display format only, and so they're not something you want to get your kids for Christmas, they are adult collector's toys. I love the way you can say adult collector's toys. <laughs> you know, I'm having a midlife crisis at 25. I'm, I'm, buy, I'm buying all my old 80s toys. Well, even though this was released in 2004. But no, they're not children's toys. If you are a serious Transformers collector, then invest in the range. There's 24 in the range at the moment. Uh, well, there's 24 in the range, give or take, because of the Vinyl Tech recolors. Sorry, the vinyl tech and the alternator recolors, uh, such as tracks, such as Prowl, such as Jazz. I think I mentioned that there's a red Jazz and there's a white Jazz. And rename, rename Meister. However, all difficulty transforming them aside, they are, as I said in another video, sex on Transformers. They are beautiful. I am, I am currently obsessed with these things. They are absolutely fantastic. Hence why they've got two videos. Because I need two videos to get it all done. But yes, if you can get them, get them. Uh, some of them, I've I've exhausted Birmingham supply of alternators. Uh, they only had the most common ones, uh, which would be Prime, Shock Blast, and all them. Uh, some of them are very finicky to transform. Others aren't as hard. 
other designers hard. Hand, for instance, and Swindle and Rollbar, I'm assuming, is quite easy to transform. Wheeljack is a nightmare to transform. But if you can get them, get them, because they are simply fantastic. Okay? I'm out of time now. In fact, I've gone over time. So I'm going to sign off with these. Uh, hopefully it won't take a third video. But for now, this is Silver Vault saying sayonara, au revoir, I'll be the same. Bye-bye.